It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Bolts and the Bengals, next on Madden Football. Named for the legendary coach and co-founder of the Bengals, here's a good look at Paul Brown Stadium on the riverfront in Cincinnati. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of this sold-out crowd. And they're all set as they'll match up with the Los Angeles Chargers. Brandon Gordon alongside my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, our quarterback matchup here, it's a good one. Justin Herbert of the Chargers, Joe Burrow of the Bengals. And you talk about two young quarterbacks with exceptional skill sets that we believe are ascending. I think that each is on a path where they may be headed towards all pro, maybe even MVP status, and they want to carry their teams along with them. Evan McPherson about ready to get this going as we are underway now from Paul Brown Stadium. DeAndre Carter returning it. And he won't quite make it to the 25. We play to win. Now Let's whistles and we've go. got a man down. A man down here following the kickoff. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Second and eight. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that's caught inside the 30. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. A big play there for L.A. Quite a show of arm strength right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And we knew that they tried to attack the secondary, but I'm not sure that we thought they'd do it right on the first drive of the game. But here they saw an opportunity, seized it, and it's a big play right off the bat. On first and 10, Herbert. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. To throw again on second down. Herbert going right side here, and that's complete. 
And the Chargers are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Eckler. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. A one-yard touchdown run from Austin Eckler. And the Chargers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. And the Chargers grab the 7 0 lead. That time, 75 yard drive, five plays. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Here are the Bengals on offense, and here is Joe Burrow ready to lead them at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story, and what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 18. The former second round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he's gonna take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second and six. No, scratch that, second and seven. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. On third down, Mixon. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he's got a Bengals first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 11, 11, 11 mighty. Here's Burrow. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Ahead of the chains Dan, Dan. now, second Dan, and two. Dan. 
Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Now Joe Mixon. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, Burrow. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Here Here's go. play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Burrow will throw. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 38-yard line. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. you still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. Open man is chase complete. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Well, Brandon, obviously no panic in them. They gave up the touchdown. You know, their defensive side did that. But he's already taken them back downfield. I love this field general that they've got. It's almost like he went to the defensive captain and said, don't worry about it. We've got you. Now yeah. they got first and goal. Yeah, we're seeing punch counter punch, and this could be setting the table for quite the game. I like that. Let's, let's go ahead and put it in the boxing ring, right? You're going to get hit sometimes. Can you respond and hit back? And they're trying to do exactly that. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Again, it's Burrow. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Zach Taylor's made the decision. He's going to go ahead and throw out the red challenge flag. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After reviewing the play, rolling on the field is reversed. So a good decision that time by Zach Taylor. Evan McPherson for the extra point. 
It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Here's Carter now on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Let's go. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. After the long touchdown drive we just saw you, what's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here, first and 10 at their own 27. He'll hand off here to Eckler, and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Eckler going to get it again on second down. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Out on the edge, you love to have cornerbacks like that that can bring them down in the run game. And you're also exposed to everyone. It really becomes a one-on-one -on -one play, doesn't it? You're out there by yourself on the edge. The best ones know how to make the play, and we just saw an example of it right there. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half. And on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Herbert. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Here's Herbert. He's airing it out for Williams. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Back deep, Trent Taylor. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. 
making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Three down, three down. Eleven, Thomas. Yes. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. 12, 12, 12. Here's a give to Mixon. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Big 13. Big 13. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Play action. He will find his man Chase complete. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. A big play that time through the air. 31 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. His throw incomplete. You gotta be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10 yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. They're passing here. Joe Burrow, throw left side, caught by the tight end, Hurst. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. Third and goal, Burrow. Dancing to his left. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down.
So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. McPherson's kick is good. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here. Here's McPherson now to send it away. DeAndre Carter now from his end zone. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. Here we go. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 11. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Logan Wilson that time there to bring him down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Meanwhile, Herbert's throw going into the hands of Williams. First down, Justin Herbert. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. It's Eckler, and that's going to be good for a Chargers first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. He's going to look for Allen now on the deep ball. And that's caught inside the 30. Touchdown, L.A. Keenan Allen, 65 yards. And the Chargers are going to retake the lead. They had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran at the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear Coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went on past them and caught the pass for a touchdown.
throwing the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Take it in at the three. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Come on now, it's time to play. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now Burrow. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. Well, here's what happened. Mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Now Burrow loses the football and picked up by the Chargers. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of a quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you, all right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, because here come the defenders. Now Herbert following the turnover. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. I think we can all understand what they're thinking right now. They take over the ball and field goal range after the turnover, so they've got that in their hip pocket. But they've got to go for the end zone and turn this into a bigger points. Their thinking is a touchdown is really what they should get from starting here. Getting three points at the end of this drive, that would feel disappointing. On second down, Eckler. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Herbert now. And to the right side here, it's Allen. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Let's go, boys. Let's go. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. 
He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Second down and goal, Herbert. He's got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Chargers. Jalen Guyton there to make the grab. The Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening, but they found the opening and exploited it. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Take it in at the three. And he takes this near the 25, just a little That's pass the there. Call it the 26. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 26. 11 MT. 11 MT. He'll hand it off here. This is Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now it's Burrow. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Right 80. Mixon with a first down carry. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 63 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Well, CD, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. The Burroughs throw here into the hands of Boyd. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Second and two. A handoff to Mixon, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, 
maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. The Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and four. Burrow looking to pass to mix it on the check down. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Mixon. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. To the right side and complete to Hurst. Now third That's down good. is looming. A pickup of two on first That's down and just one yard there. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Now the Bengals on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Burrow. Gonna throw deep for the end zone. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, 27 yards. And the Bengals have got it back to a one-score game. If there was one knock on Joe Burrow coming out of LSU, you know, it was arm strength, but kind of put those doubts to rest right there. And you'd think on third down, they'd just be looking for something right beyond the sticks. And I think they caught the defense flat-footed as a result because they decided they were going to take a shot right there, and it ended up being a big play. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead is down to four. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Here's Carter now on the return. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Justin Herbert leading this unit out for their next possession. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here, first and 10 at their own 26. They started on the ground with Eckler. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! People got the that's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. 
Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, Herbert. Out left, he's got it to Everett. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Draw play, it's Eckler. And that didn't fool anybody. He's gonna be dropped in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. The Chargers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and four. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. One fifty-eight left to play till we hit halftime. Let's go! On two. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. On second and inches, Burrow. Open man is Chase complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Dumps it off to Mixon. So it goes as a completed pass, but they lose a full five yards. Well, his completion percentage continues to rise with that one, but sometimes you want your completion percentage to go down. Maybe you should have thought about throwing that one away. I was just going to say, it is easier said than done, but that's where you may be buried at his feet. Make sure he doesn't catch it. Great, job. great call right there. Put it near the receiver. No grounding, nothing like that, but no one gets a chance to pick it off either. Throwing again on second down. Burrow. This is caught. It's Boyd. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. going to throw again escaping the pressure right and he slides and covers up at the end Nowhere. as he's going to be able to pick Absolutely. up decent yardage Nowhere. the Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one four yards remain for second down Hey, we got a seal, we got a seal, we got a seal. 
Burrow will throw. Being chased out left. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. The long-distance shot before break comes up empty, but now Charles flipped the script. Time for likely one more play as field position becomes an issue. Yeah, when you talk about field position, remember, if this kick is missed, the ball comes back to where? The spot that they snapped it from, so field position becomes a factor. I think at this spot, you might also want to think about throwing the Hail Mary. You know, put the ball up in the air, maybe you can get six out of it instead of three. Yeah, see what happens. The final shot before the break for Herbert. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we have reached halftime intermission with the visiting Chargers on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Chargers in that first half. And even though they've got the lead, they're likely going over ways they can improve the running game as they didn't find a whole lot of success in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football, and they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Here's Hopkins now out to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And Charles, they trail here, though not really the fault of this offense. No, they certainly did their part in the first half. But when you're in a shootout like this, you definitely want your defense to play better, but you know that's out of your control. All you can do, keep putting points on the scoreboard and keep giving your defense opportunities to make stops. Second and four. Now it's Burrow. And he'll find Chase on the right side complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Let's go. 
But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll run on first down. Mixon, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Once again, they run with Mixon. There's the stiff arm. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 84 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, a give to Mixon. He had a really solid first half running the football and picking up where he left off here in the third quarter. How about the yardage he's piling up right now? This feels like a full game, not just the series that we're watching right now. I know people are screaming, where are the adjustments from halftime on the defensive side of the ball? Sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes you just got to find a way to tackle someone. I'm fine, ready? On first down, Mixon, and he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second and six. And now they will throw it with Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. This is caught. Touchdown, Bengals. Hayden Hurst, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Bengals are once again going to retake the lead. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. McPherson on for the point after. And that one gives him a three-point lead. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it ends with a Bengals score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. 
From his end zone, here comes Carter. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now a look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're looking to turn things around here. They've been shut down in this third quarter, and that was after a good first half offensively. And you wonder where it all goes, and it feels like it goes away fast because it takes some time to build up good momentum, great play calling, excellent execution, and then in like a blink of an eye, <laughs> you're losing the game. Yep. How do you get back there again? I'm sure they've talked about it, and they've got a plan. Now can they put it into practice? The lead gone, now the search to find it again. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Second and 10. It's Eckler again. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Open man, Parham. He's got him. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the give, this is Eckler. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Second down at five. Once more, here's Eckler. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. On the ground, it's Eckler. And across midfield, he goes and into Bengal territory. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, here's Herbert. And that's complete to the right side of Allen. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Running on first down, Eckler. 
And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 62 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Going on the ground with Eckler. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here is Eckler. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Austin Eckler, his second touchdown of the night. And the Chargers have answered back with a third quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. Uh, he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Let's go, baby. Give us all. Give us all. And out now, here come the Bengals. They had seized the lead there for a little bit with a starting drive in the third quarter, but a moment ago, the touchdown that puts them back behind. So their defense is under siege a little bit right now because they have not been able to solve their opponents. So they've got to keep hammering away on offense and try and win this one in what appears to be a shootout. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 22. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Burrow. Steps away to his left. And Burrow going to slide to the ground as he does pick up the first down. Here we go. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll drop to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he will slide to a halt with a penalty marker down on the play. 
Well, they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're usually to pick up a holding call. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. From midfield now, Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 34-yard line. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Now Burrow on first down. Here's Higgins out of the right side. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. going to give this to Mixon. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. On, well, they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Now Joe Mixon, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Six yards left on second down. Now it's Burrow. He find his man Chase complete. And he'll be out of bounds. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Here's Burrow. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd with his second touchdown of the night as his guys are able to regain the lead. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that gives them a three-point lead. That time, a nine-point 
play drive. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Justin Herbert and the rest of the Charger offense set to take over once more. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, was playing well. Flipped the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the Pee Wee days, you know, <laughs> when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? <laughs> and remember, weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the Surface tablets. You just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. Well, we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Get nowhere. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Here's second and a yard. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Herbert now. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Here's Herbert. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off around the 37. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Yeah, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes 
The quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Here we go, here we go. What is that? I got you, son. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Flush to his right. And Burrow going to slide to the ground as he does pick up the first down. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair. Because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Well, yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Burrow will throw. Flushed out right. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Let's go. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Now he's got it. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now it's Burrow. Escaping the... And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Joe Burrow taking it in from two yards out. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over. And here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Five plays there on that drive. And it was Joe Burrow who took it himself for the touchdown run. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit.
Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He finds his target, Allen. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Herbert. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Here's second and ten. Out of the gun, Herbert. That is caught. It's Williams. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 46. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? A false start backs him up five, first and 15. A handoff, it's Eckler. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, second down. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. On second and 15 now, Herbert. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. On third down, here's Eckler. Runs through the contact. Now room for Eckler. And all the way in for a Charger touchdown. Austin Eckler, 43 yards. And the Chargers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. Extra point good by Hopkins. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Taking it about the one. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. 
They've been rolling the last couple of drives, each inning in touchdowns. So this game is flipped. They were down. Now they're up with the football. We'll see how they handle it. Can we get a spy on the headset now between the head coach and offensive coordinator? Because they've been in attack mode. Had to get back into the game. Now they have the lead. Do you stay on the attack? Or do you dial it back a little bit to try and protect this lead? Well, my cop-out answer would be somewhere in the middle. I think it's going to be a fine line, is it not? I think you're exactly right. But I do think if they can stay aggressive and keep... And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Jerry Tillery just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Well, it's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for decent yardage, and obviously they've got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back, but every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And a good stiff arm and some space to run. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. It'll be a net of 39, 41-yard punt, two on the return. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll hand off here to Eckler. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Eckler going to get it again on second down. Now room for Eckler. And he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. On first and 10, Herbert. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. By the way, you'd be looking at about a 47-yarder from here as they come up on an important third down. Now it's Herbert. And Allen's got it! And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Let's take him in the evening. Oh, no, now let's do this! Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Herbert. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Well, they went back to him, but the results were similar, so I highly doubt that he'll get another opportunity here on third and long. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Herbert going to throw. And this would have been intercepted if he could have gotten the feet in. He didn't, so it's incomplete. Boy, that one really could have turned this thing upside down. That's not exactly what you want there, especially given the time of the clock. But now, you've got to kick the field goal, right? You do, and actually, you show a little faith in your defense when you do that because you kick the field goal here. You're telling them, we believe you'll get the ball back for us for one more shot. And Hopkins' kick is good. And we are all tied here in the final stages. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Here we go, here we go. Right, 80. Let's go, right, 80. Throwing, Burrow. Oh, it stays up. That is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here we go. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. 
Burrow. He finds his running back, Mixon. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Well, that sets up a big third down. Now the decision has to be, do you run it here and play for OT? Or do you go ahead and press it downfield? Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. Burrow. And it's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Again, it's Mixon. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Pardon, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. a timeout as they will indeed call it with five seconds to go and a chance with a field goal to win the game. So all eyes now locked on Evan McPherson. He's made one, and he's missed one thus far. This for the win. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So all eyes now locked on Evan McPherson. He's made one, and he's missed one thus far. This for the win. And his kick is indeed good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And you know, in an era of cost cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams. And in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. Here's McPherson now to send it away. Here's Carter now on the return. Let's go, baby. Well, this one Carter was fun down at the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won. <laughs> and fun for us because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur at the end, but what a game all the way through.